She was just a really sweet girl. And we were both, you know, coming out around the same time in the 80s, you know, both getting in the mix around the same time. So we were contemporaries and we were both, you know, young. She said, Eddie, he must be out of his mind. Matter of fact, he is out of his mind. <laughs> He's going to call me on my wedding day and tell me that I'm making a mistake. What were your thoughts when you heard about the passing of Whitney Houston? Well, like everybody else, I was, you know, shocked and then, you know, super sad. Whitney was a really, really, really sweet girl. Eddie Murphy seems to be suffering from echoes of the past as he reveals a heartbreaking story that has haunted him for years. The 62-year-old comedian recently spoke with journalists, and he shared a heart-wrenching story of how he was denied a love story that would have changed the course of his life. Eddie's heart-touching personal narrative is an example of how the elites in Hollywood use their power and money to alter people's lives and destinies. It is a classic example of the power brokers controlling every aspect of the industry players' lives to suit their personal gains. Love Conquers All is a theme that is common in Hollywood movies, but it never was in Eddie Murphy's life. Murphy's story touched the hearts of many fans while it shed light on the dark side of the entertainment industry. What is Eddie Murphy's full story on his secret love affair in Hollywood? How does it shed light on the evils in the industry. Follow me as we take a deep dive into the lives of two of the greatest black entertainers in the history of the entertainment industry. He was a beautiful person. Yeah. Was a really, really, I, I, I hear a lot of people talking about her sense of humor. She really did have a great sense of humor. She was a funny girl. Actor and comedian Eddie Murphy is famous for cracking ribs and spreading joy wherever he goes, whether on TV, radio, stage, or in a movie. His films and shows have grossed millions of dollars and have endeared him to many fans across the racial divide. He's almost all always smiling, oozing good vibes, but little did his fans know that the great comedian was carrying a pain in his heart. A pain that time is finding it difficult to heal and probably can't, given how long it has taken. In a recent interview with journalists, the Coming to America star told the heartbreaking story of how Clive Davis sold off Whitney when he discovered that he was dating her. The story shocked many fans, who were used to a different narrative of the whole Whitney Houston, Eddie Murphy romantic saga. In the mid-80s, news was rife that Eddie Murphy and Whitney Houston were an item though the couple never accepted it. They were photographed on a few occasions, with the couple sharing magical moments that can only happen between lovers. Whitney Houston's friend Ellen White once said this about Eddie and Houston. I watched them once at a party, she recalled. Eddie came in, cameras were flashing, and they just looked at each other and talked and laughed like they were the only two people in the room. Their rumored romantic relationship became fodder for entertainment gossip columns as they spun several tales of their romantic affair, adding more spice and drama to all that was happening. Many saw them as a black power couple that would rule the entertainment industry, with Murphy conquering comedy while Houston standing atop the music ladder. However, things didn't turn out the way every pundit projected or every fan expected. The couple stopped seeing each other as they used to, and the magic was lost. Both Eddie Murphy and Whitney Houston would go on to nurse broken hearts as they went on with their lives and respective careers. They even went on to date other people. Whitney ended up in Bobby Brown's arms, and Eddie went on to date Paulette McNeely. Well, the secret of the collapse of their relationship was never revealed until recently. And according to Word on the Street, Clive Davis was the alleged mastermind of their potential split. At the time, Whitney was signed to Arista Records, which was the record label of Clive Davis. The rumor continues that Clive, seeing that Whitney's relationship with Eddie Murphy would derail her progress, stopped her from seeing Eddie Murphy. In his estimation, Murphy's career would have overshadowed Whitney's, preventing her from hitting the heights that he had planned for her. Clive Davis was a perfectionist. He saw potential potential in Whitney Houston and wanted to explore it to the fullest. He knew that the lady had a gift that would bring the world to her feet, so he didn't want anything, not even a man, to stand in the way of his plans for her. Even if she had to be with a man, the man mustn't be bigger than Whitney and certainly mustn't have the same pull as the songstress. Eddie was a big star by the time he started dating Whitney Houston. His characters Buckwheat and Gumby on the sketch comedy series Saturday Live had already become household names. So popular was the Buckwheat character that it had to be retired by being a fascinated on camera because Murphy was tired of the constant requests to play Buckwheat. His stand-up special Delirious received rave reviews and is still viewed as one of the best stand-up movies of all time. Delirious introduced Eddie Murphy to the big league, announcing his talent as a stand-up act. By the time his next special, Eddie Murphy Raw, came around, the comedian had become so sought after that it grossed $50 million. It was evident that Eddie Murphy was destined for the very top, and so was Whitney. Thus, Clive Davis figured that if he didn't break up the couple, Eddie could outshine his artist and quell
sell his dreams. So, the rumor continues that Clive Davis planted Bobby Brown in the singer's life. Some claim he forced her into marrying Bobby. Others think he made the R&B singer sweep her off her feet. Initially, Whitney Houston didn't mind dating Eddie Murphy. After all, she loved him. But y'all know Whitney Houston didn't particularly have a strong will and did fall for Clive Davis's alleged schemes. Now, what I'm about to reveal is intriguing but complicated, so be sure to follow me or you might lose the drift. In 2019, Robin Crawford alleged that she was in a romantic relationship with Whitney when she was 19 and Whitney was 16. They had a brief stint but couldn't continue because it was going to affect Whitney's career. Mind you, Crawford worked as Whitney Houston's assistant and creative director, helping on a couple of her movies, such as The Bodyguard. At the time, the rumors were rife that Whitney was a closeted but they couldn't come out because of the against gays at the time. Interestingly, Clive Davis was fully aware of the relationship and recently spoke about it prior to the premiere of the Whitney Houston biopic, I Wanna Dance With Somebody. He told Extra, the movie does set the record straight. Whitney and Crawford did have a teenage one-year affair. He then addressed the rumors that went around in the 80s about Houston's S. The film highlighted her relationship with Crawford in part because there'd been so many articles that have attempted to trace her addiction to being a frustrated le that she never dated a man before she met Bobby, all of which was totally inaccurate. Now, if Clive Davis knew of Robin and Houston's secret love affair, one can only assume that he had a hand in their eventual breakup. Remember, Robin claimed that she and Whitney broke up because of her career. So, it's possible Davis pressured the two ladies to break up their union because coming out as a black in the 1980s was bad for business. Whitney would have endured a significant backlash from the black community. Plus, the white conservatives would have rejected her music outright, causing financial loss to the label, and Clive Davis wouldn't want that. Of course, Robin wouldn't leave her lover's side, so she became an assistant and gradually transitioned into her creative director. Now, if Clive Davis initiated Houston and Roby's breakup, then it isn't far-fetched to assume that he pressured Houston to call things off with Eddie Murphy for reasons we've already spoken about. Fast forward, Houston Houston was allowed to marry Bobby Brown, whom she met at the 1989 Soul Train Awards. Brown was one of the pioneers of New Jack Swing, a fusion of hip-hop and R&B. He started his career in the R&B and pop group New Edition, from its inception in 1978 until his exit from the group in December 1985. By 1988, Brown's solo career had taken off, releasing his second studio album, Don't Be Cruel. The album was a critical and commercial success, featuring hit singles such as My Prerogative and Every Little Step, which won the Grammy Award for Best Male R&B Vocal Performance at the 32nd Grammy Awards in 1990. Brown was making waves in the entertainment industry, but was in no way comparable to Eddie Murphy. By the time T. Bobby Brown had won his award, Eddie Murphy was already a global icon with his 1988 international hit, Coming to America. Clive Davis was right, Eddie Murphy's star had surpassed Whitney Houston's. Coming to America became a box office success, grossing over $128 million in the United States alone. The following month after its premiere in the U.S., the movie launched internationally, raking in another $288,500,000. Eddie Murphy had hit the heights purportedly predicted by Clive Davis and would have overshadowed Whitney Houston had they gotten married. To give you a little bit of context, Bobby Brown was a rising star in his own right. He had released some chart-topping songs and was making huge waves as a solo artist, but his relationship with Whitney Houston sort of dipped his shine. Their tumultuous marriage and took attention from their respective careers, which badly affected Bobby Brown. Bobby gained international prominence and fame only for being the husband of one of the biggest stars at the time, don't get me wrong. He had immense talent and had released some decent songs that were doing well, but none was at par with his wife's songs. Some insiders even claim that one of the reasons for their frequent marital conflicts was Bobby's constant living and walking in his wife's shadow. So, if Clive had allowed Eddie Murphy to marry Whitney, Eddie would have been the bigger star of the two, causing Whitney to constantly walk in his shadow. Clive's obsession with stardom is well known to his artists. He had a business model that he followed to the core, which brought him plenty of money and immense success, though we can't say some for his artists. He was known to put his signees through the mill, bending them to suit his will, and anyone who wouldn't follow his will was punished without mercy. Take, for example, Phyllis Hyman. Hyman was one of the most sensational singers of her time, having released hits during her time with Buddha Records. The tall, pretty, and enigmatic songstress had a silky voice that held her audience spell 
Hellbound. Her strong vocal cords produced great soul and R&B songs that endeared her to many black folks. When Clive Davis's Arista Records absorbed Buddha Records in the 80s, Clive took particular interest in Phyllis Hyman and immediately brought her under his wings for mentorship. However, that move appeared to spell the doom of Phyllis, as the two would clash in one of the most tumultuous relationships in the history of music. Clive saw a star in Phyllis and also saw lots of money in her as well. He knew that if he could harness her talent and her physical appeal, the Philadelphia native would make him millions of dollars. So, he hatched a plan. He imagined that if Phyllis would ditch soul and R&B for pop, she would appeal to the larger white audience who also had great purchasing power. He also envisaged that changing Hyman's physical looks by giving her a sensual appeal would do the trick. He was excited, but little did he know that he would meet great resistance from his signee. Phyllis Hyman was a strong black woman who was proud of her black heritage. She knew her beginnings and didn't want to do anything to disrespect or disparage it. Moreover, she was the queen and the front woman during her time at Buddha Records and wasn't used to being told what to do. So, when Clive Davis suggested that she switch genres and adopt pop instead of R&B or soul, Phyllis flared up. She knew what Davis was trying to do, so she refused to see reason. When Clive suggested that she ditched her signature hats and long dresses for a more sensual look, Phyllis was having none of that. Aside from her music career, Phyllis was an activist, fighting for a better, brighter future for black folks. She was against the establishment that was trying to change the black identity. So, she stood her ground and refused to bend to Clive Davis's will. According to Deep Throat sources, Phyllis's stance angered Clive, and he didn't want to have to do with her. But the straw that broke the camel's back was when the soul singer decided to pursue acting in addition to her music. She felt she had a passion for acting and wanted to explore it, but Clive Davis thought otherwise. To him, acting would be an unwelcome distraction. Thus, he forbade the singer from pursuing her passion, but being the ever strong-willed woman, Phyllis auditioned for the Broadway musical Sophisticated Ladies, and she got the part. This act of defiance annoyed Clive Davis, who swore never to promote Phyllis Hyman. Now, I'm bringing all these to you so you'll see why Whitney Houston had to agree to Clive Davis's suggestion to ditch Eddie Murphy. So, Clive Davis relegated Phyllis Hyman's albums and projects to the back burner because she wouldn't follow his demands. For years, Phyllis couldn't release any album because her label would just not promote it. This frustrated her and drove her into sadness and depression. She performed well on stage, winning an award for best performance by a featured actress in a musical. However, that wasn't enough to fill the void of not having her album promoted across states and international borders. During that dark period, Phyllis developed an intense dislike for Clive Davis, seeing him as the devil that had hindered her progress. She stood her ground and wouldn't give in to Davis's demands to ditch R&B of pop. Sadly, this decision hurt her career badly, as she couldn't reach the heights that she was destined for. Phyllis hardly achieved national fame either, as her time with Arista appeared to be wasted. This is what Phyllis had to say about Clive Davis. Clive Davis taught me to never be afraid because I was so by him. Whether he meant to do it or not, I'll never know. But he sure taught me that if you try to t me again, well, we can't say that on public radio. What I might do to someone who tries to hurt me like that again in this business, I'm not having it. I should be respected as I respect, and I will not have someone try to ruin my spirit and ruin my career. If Clive Davis, if his plan was to destroy my career, it didn't work. Many fans believe that Whitney Houston witnessed this and didn't want the same to happen to her, so she gave in to Clive's demands. Note that Whitney started out as an R&B and soul singer influenced by the gospel sound, but it was her pop songs that brought her fame and fortune. Though she had the fame and money, she lost touch with the black community because many felt she had betrayed them, unlike Phyllis. The black community saw Whitney as a sellout and started boycotting her shows and music. Radio stations owned by blacks refused to play her music because they felt she was pandering to the whites. Everything came to a head at the 1989 Soul Train Awards when Whitney Houston was booed when she was named as one of the nominees for an award. Whitney suffered an identity crisis during her lifetime, with Reverend Al Sharpton once referred to her as Whitey Houston. However, it is emerging that it wasn't her fault. She was forced to choose pop and look the part all because someone wanted her to make millions for him. Davis dictated every aspect of Whitney's life, something that is evident in his mentee, Diddy's life, but we would come to that later. Davis purportedly dictated who Whitney Houston could date, and unfortunately, it wasn't Eddie Murphy. According to Robin Crawford, Eddie Murphy was heartbroken when he learned that his heartthrob was getting married to another man. She claimed that he called Whitney and told her she was making a great mistake that would haunt her for the rest of her life. She said, Eddie, he must be out of his mind. Matter of fact, he is out of his mind. <laughs> He's going to call me on my wedding day and tell me that I'm making a mistake. But it was too late. Whitney had made up her mind 
She had, all of a sudden, fallen out of love with Eddie Murphy, and it was unbelievable. For someone who was so much in love with Eddie, and then to switch within the twinkle of an eye was suspicious. Now here's an interesting twist to the whole Murphy-Houston saga. Some conspiracy theorists think that Clive Davis stopped Whitney Houston from dating Eddie Murphy because of jealousy. Yes, I was surprised when I heard it too, but their explanation made sense. In a recent interview, Robin Crawford alleged that Whitney broke up with Eddie Murphy because he was dating another man. Narrating the story, Crawford claimed that Whitney told her she was in bed with Murphy when the phone rang at night. Murphy then picked up the call and went out of the room to speak with whoever was on the other side of the call. Whitney got suspicious, so she picked up another phone in the house to listen to the reason Eddie left her alone in the bedroom. To her surprise, Eddie was on the phone with another man, and the conversation they were having was the kind that could only happen between two lovers. Now for you Gen Zs who don't know how telephones worked back in the day, here's a little history lesson for you. Telephones in the 80s and 90s were connected through a single line. For example, multiple telephones in the house used a single line. Thus you can pick up one phone and eavesdrop on any conversation that anyone using any of the phones in the house is having with another person. That was how Whitney could tell Eddie was talking to another lover. Whitney then got pissed, threw Murphy's things out of the house, and ordered him never to step foot in there again. The conspiracy theorists suspect that the person on the other side of the line was Clive Davis. Interestingly, Davis in 2013 revealed that he was B.I., having experimented with men since the early 90s. Though he's been married and divorced twice, his longest relationships have been with men, and many suspect his current partner is a male. So, it appears the former president and CEO of Arista Records is more into men than women, which makes sense. It accurately explains why he would stop Whitney from seeing Eddie Murphy, so he could have him all to himself. Himself. Sadly, Clive's antics didn't stop with him. He transferred it to the people he mentored. A case in point is the CEO of Bad Boy Entertainment, Sean Combs, professionally known as Diddy. Clive met Diddy when he had just been fired from Uptown Records for clashing with label boss Andre Harrell. Diddy proposed forming a music label that would cater to the burgeoning hip-hop music. Clive Davis agreed and pumped millions into the foundation of Bad Boy Records. Many believe that Diddy had an S relationship with the music mogul, which facilitated the transfer of cash into his account for the label's founding. However, I won't go into that because we've already discussed those allegations at length on this channel. Anyway, Diddy founded his label in 1993 and produced some of the top hip-hop acts in the 90s and early 2000s, just like his mentor did for pop music. Diddy produced several hits and made millions of dollars for his label, growing it from scratch to one of the biggest music labels in the business. Soon, allegations started flying everywhere that Diddy, then known as Puff Daddy, was mistreating his signees. This caused some signees, such as Mace and Mark Curry, to abandon ship and either pursue a solo career or sign for another label. However, many fans didn't believe the rumors, thinking that it was all a ploy to bring one black music producer who was rubbing shoulders with the giants. However, last November gave everyone a glimpse of what actually went on at Bad Boy Records. Cassie Ventura, a former Bad Boy signee and ex-girlfriend of Diddy, sued the music mogul for mistreating and manhandling her and sleeping with her against her will. However, it didn't end there. She accused her former boss of controlling every aspect of her life, including what she wore, the genre to sing and where to go, similar to what Clive Davis wanted to do to Phyllis Hyman. She detailed how Diddy got jealous when she left him for one rapper, suspected to be Kid Cootie, back in 2011. Narrating her the singer claimed that Diddy once squared up to her and told her she would blow up her lover's car if she didn't stop seeing him. Incidentally, someone blew Kid Cootie's car up in the driveway in 2012. At the time, no one knew who to blame, but Cassie's revelations had everyone pointing fingers at Diddy as the mastermind behind the explosion. Just like Clive Davis, the CEO of Bad Boy Records dictated who she should date, and because she refused to obey his commands, he allegedly blew up her lover's car. Thankfully, Kid Cootie wasn't inside the vehicle or anywhere near it when it blew up. However, that incident made fans wonder if a similar fate would have befallen Eddie Murphy had Whitney Houston refused Clive Davis's demands. Sadly, Whitney allegedly paid the ultimate price of being a puppet in the hands of the elite. Many conspiracy theorists believe that when she stopped generating millions of dollars for the elite, they sacrificed her. A few years before her demise, Whitney was neck deep in debt and was becoming a liability to her label. It was revealed that she asking friends and family for $100 handouts. When she finally passed, the coroner ruled that it happened 
happen through accidental drowning, but a private investigator, Paul Hubel, had a different theory. According to him, signs of struggle were visible on Houston's hands and legs, as well as her lower back was burnt. He also noted that the water was still hot at the time of the paramedic's arrival, explaining that not even a person high on would plunge themselves into the scalding water. Thus, his conclusion was that the singer was probably accidentally unalived. Though he failed to mention Clive Davis as the main suspect, claiming that Whitney was assassinated because she owed some lord huge debts. Many fans pointed hands at the music mogul. They wondered why he would throw a pre-gala party at the very premises that his artist was fighting for her dear life. In fact, some reports indicate that while Clive Davis was partying with his friends, Houston's body was sneaked through the back door of the hotel into a waiting ambulance and was driven like she didn't matter. Thus, they concluded that the music mogul sacrificed Whitney Houston for his personal gains, and you can't their theories. Many blogs claim that Houston made more money for her masters through her demise than when she was alive. It was as if her bosses knew all these and planned and prepared for it by carefully choosing her path for her, including who she would eventually marry. So, the conspiracy theorists conclude that though Eddie Murphy really loved Whitney, there was little he could do as he was fighting against a system designed and operated by the elites, including Clive Davis. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching.